Welcome to the world famous Cheeky Jaguar Radio broadcast. We are coast to coast and border to border on iHeartRadio today and also AMFM247.com. Tune in, iTunes, and of course, each and every Friday. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my notes. I've switched things around. I don't know where to look. Um, we are internationally live on 107.5 FM in the United Kingdom during the drive time hour on Lesta Radio. And uh, broadcasting on the Roku Broadcasting Network via the AM FM 24-7 network each and every week. I am, of course, Jigman Freud, the, uh, the master debater, the cunning linguist, and the admiral of alliteration joining you today here on our program. And uh, we have a great guest joining us today. I, I have been uh, a fan of this guy's for a little bit. I watch all of his interviews. I see all of his content. Uh, he is just... As, as my good friend Frank Cotola would say, he is busier than a ferret in a jello fight. Wow. Uh, it's busy. Yes, very busy. It, it's either that or a gerbil in a batting cage. I, I, wasn't, which, I wasn't sure which one I was going to go with there. But uh, <laughs> So, Darren, give, give us a little bit of an introduction on yourself. How, how, how do we find you on social media? How do we uh, get in touch with your content? All, all, all the good stuff. Well, Darren Paltrowitz is the name. The last name Paltrowitz, it's like Gwyneth Paltrow with an I-T-Z at the end. So if you put uh, <laughs> at Paltrowitz onto any social media, you'll basically find me. And my podcast, the Paltrowcast with Darren Paltrowitz, I turned into a TV slot. So it's the same, same content on TV, the podcast, the YouTube. So kind of like you, taping interviews six, seven days a week, right? You're a six or seven day a weeker. It seems like it. And dur during the pandemic, I was every day because all these people yeah. had nothing to do. They might as well talk to yeah. my dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of like you, um, speaking to the highest of the highbrow, the lowest of the lowbrow, you know, the old Howard Stern thing where you talk to smart people about dumb stuff and dumb people about smart stuff. And uh, every now and then you meet people in the middle. So we connected because uh, I've watched your stuff. You've watched my stuff. But uh, we both are appreciators of Ralph Sutton, isn't that right? Yes, yes, the the, the fantastic Ralph Sutton. He is uh, he is God's gift to radio, essentially. Even even, even though he will not uh, he will not admit to it, he is. Yeah, yeah, he is one <laughs> of the most underrated interviewers there is. There are, there is. I think it's there is. Well, whatever it whatever is, it is, uh, it James, is. Thank you for that kind intro and really great to connect after all this time so i see that you do a lot of stuff in the world of pro wrestling as they say um so tell me about some of the different people that, that you've talked to i know you know you've done some stuff with pretty much everybody you can think of oh no not everybody you can think of i mean there's no hulk hogan interview in <laughs> of course not <laughs> <laughs> on my CV, but like I've done three or four Chris Jericho interviews. It's a long list of you know work, former world champions and interesting people. People from AEW, WWE, Impact, Ring of Honor, all over the board. And most wrestlers are really, really great interviews that are easy to talk with because they're just prepared for anything. They're they're kind of like improv actors meet rock stars in in a way. Uh, you've interviewed some wrestlers yourself, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Who's on your list? Well, uh, we uh, we once paid for a Velvet Sky interview with uh, Oreo cookies. Uh, okay. We uh, <laughs> we've interviewed uh, Austin Aries. Uh, Ken Anderson did kind of a, a cool little intro that we use the uh, use the crap out of for Jiggy Jag TV. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, I I have all the various uh, local wrestlers that I've interviewed, but I'm 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 slowly but surely uh, those you know I, I listen to enough Jim Cornette. Uh, the, 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 those people are are basically mud show participants at this point, <laughs> and uh, so I, I've talked to a little bit of everybody. I, I will have to say that um, a, a lot of times with the with the pro wrestling world, it, it seems, like you said, they're prepared for really anything. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, they're very, you know, one of the things I love about pro wrestling, as opposed to the world of music, is there's not a lot of gatekeepers. 
And I usually don't get the old adage and the lovely email that says, oh, their schedule is just so tight. We're not going to be able to do an interview. When in reality, I have promoted enough shows and been around enough shows that they load in at noon or one and they have nothing to do till 10 o'clock. Yeah, However, I, their schedule is just too tight. <laughs> I'm interrupting you here, but I wholeheartedly no, agree with most of that. I find that with wrestling, it's it's generally a hard bar to get over to be able to do interviews. Like you have to prove your worth that you will not fanboy out at people, that you can string sentences together, that you can meet deadlines. And if you get that opportunity, most of the companies will then go, okay, you want another one? You go, yeah. And then you keep getting more and more and more. Uh, the biggest two companies can be a little challenging to get in with. But otherwise, I find that wrestlers tell one another, hey, that guy's a, a interview that's not too painful. And <laughs> you can keep getting them and getting them. And I think I've taped three wrestling interviews this week. I mean, they're out there. That's for sure. One of the things that I, I like about what you do is you treat everyone like – they're just everybody else. And there are so many of these guys that are in, I guess you would have to refer to this space. I cannot stand that term, but uh, this yeah. space that they just think they are the, the greatest thing ever because they're talking to whoever. And I'm like, guys, you, 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 you got to calm down. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I, I really think that most wrestlers are just wonderful, easy people to get along with in an interview format. And I find most heavy metal people are easy. Uh, the angrier the music, the nicer the human being they tend to be. <laughs> and That's comedians, awesome. it's a similar deal <laughs> with wrestling. As long as they're not, you're not making them try and be funny when they're off stage. Most comedians are interesting with with great philosophical stuff. But when you talk to pop stars who are happy and upbeat and all that in their music and their persona, they're usually tough and have demands. It's rough. Uh, do you find that as well, that the angrier the character or the music, the easier they are to talk to in, in an interview? Yes, I've, I, I've noticed that. Uh, w one of the things that I like about what you do is you will talk to literally anybody about anything. <laughs> I think that's a compliment. <laughs> uh, it's well, great. I mean, to pull the curtain back a little bit, sometimes they tell you what you can and you can't talk about. And well, I'm yeah. really good about that because I can still find interesting things. And sometimes you, you find – you talk to them about what you're supposed to, and they still talk about the stuff that they told you not to ask about anyway. Yes, we uh, we actually did that with, um, and I, I don't know why. I, I, I guess it was because way back when we started doing J Jiggy Jag TV, I, I that whole idea was it was the lowest. You know, I, I wanted to be called. Uh, I, I had talked to the people at Access TV, and I was like, "Well, what 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 is the what is the highest rated show on this on this channel?" And they're like, "Well, Live from Salina," and I'm like, "Well, then we are going to be the lowest rated show on this channel." And ironically, we became, I think, the highest rated channel before the the several different suspensions and several banishments that I had over the years. But uh, that was one thing we did with OTEP was we were told the first time we interviewed OTEP, "Don't talk to her about politics." Do not do it. You're not allowed to. She will just, it won't happen. Just just don't talk about politics. And so, of course, at the end of the interview, I had to ask her some political questions. And, uh, and, and she blew off sound check to, you know, talk to us about, you know, all sorts of different things. But, um, yeah, and then uh, most of the interviews afterwards, we, we ended up talking to Evil J when Otep would come to town instead of her. But <laughs> I do I do understand the whole thing of you know you yeah you're, you're you're given a list of things to talk about and what not to talk about so yeah um, if I really knew the person I would push back or if I'd work with the publicist a lot of times or the manager a lot of times I'd push back but generally it's an honor to be speaking with a lot of these people a lot of the people I interview I'm a, an existing fan of and that's why I'm doing it so. 
you know, some conversation is better than no conversation, yes. no matter how limited. Yes, very much so. And I have found over the years that it, it, it is a lot easier to uh, to go through the, you know, because... <laughs> We have been we have been doing all this crap long enough that uh, I I will go through the proper channels if I need to, mm -hmm. but a lot of times I don't <laughs> because yeah. certain certain PR people have a problem with me for whatever reason or they have been I uh, you know th there's there's a lot of times I run into issues where PR people have been have have uh, don't like me because someone else has went and buried me to them. You're using and, wrestling terms there. Yes. <laughs> I see what you're doing there. Yes. And so I just have to go around them. I, 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 I got to go other ways. And there, and we usually get it done. Uh, my favorite thing is if I've got an interview that I wanted to do and the PR people have told me explicit, explicitly, no, you know, it's yeah. not going to happen. No, 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 no. And I managed to get the interview anyway. I will send them a link to the interview and thank them for working with me on it. And usually I never hear anything back. And the fact that I can visually watch their head explode at the computer when I know they get that inter when they get, when they get that email, that's enough for me. I, I do that too. I honestly do that too. I've had cases where this band I love was not available and you go, well, I'll do any time zone, any time, any band yes. member. Give me 90 seconds and like, yep, they're, they're not available. And then I get a press release from somehow from the UK or the Canadian counterpart. And they go, yeah, sure. When do you want that? <laughs> that's and awesome. That's happened a number of times. And I, I'm a little nicer about it. I'll say, Hey, just an FYI, this happened and let me know who else you got. And <laughs> sometimes it's had good results. And then other times they continue, they just go, thanks exclamation point. And, they try and blacklist you further. Um, you know what? This is a this is a long game, and I I'm curious if you agree with this. Yes. The actual interview is like 10 percent of the job. <laughs> it's really the not other 90 percent is scheduling it, preparing for it, dealing with the corrections and the notes you get, promoting it on social media, dealing with the comments after the fact, etc. Yes. Yes. I completely agree all the way around with that because you, you, you've got to deal with all the shenanigans. It, it seems like with, uh, mm -hmm. some of these different things. And what I always think is funny and with you, you, you've done enough of these that you have, uh, a resume and you've been able to prove things. And I remember back when we started with Jiggy Jag TV, I, you know, I wasn't able to prove nothing. <laughs> so we went around and around and around and around with various people. And we finally were able to get three good ones. And I always tell the various people, like, like I have this uh, one photographer that I work with in Wichita, Kansas, of all places. And okay. his, his name is Chris Ortiz. And Chris... I try to get Chris into all sorts of stuff, and he always wants to do things. But he'll send me uh, messages. He'll, he'll he'll be like, "Well, Toby Keith's going to be at the you know the big arena. I want to interview Toby Keith." And I'm like, "Well, why don't you go interview the three local rappers that I wanted you to interview last week, so we can build you a resume?" Yeah. So then I can send that to Toby Keith's people, and they go, oh, he's actually done some interviews. Right. Yeah, everybody wants to start up top with getting <laughs> Yes. And they don't realize that there's a dues-paying process. <laughs> but then again, there's also a thing. If you take Toby Keith, for example, you know, putting yeah. him on the spot here, you know he's not just a singer. He's got the – is it called the I Love This Bar? I believe so, yeah. And does he have a bourbon – I think, I think so. I think so. And then he's got his festival series, and for a while he was working with Impact Wrestling. Yes. So 
people that I was told no on, you just figure out, well, what is their other project? What else <laughs> I've done that before. I've <laughs> done so that before. For somebody That's like Chris Jericho, fun. I think I was told no by two different wrestling companies, but I got him on the book publisher the first time. And then the second oh. time, <laughs> appearance, I think the third time I got him on a band appearance. That's like, awesome. Sometimes you just got to think outside you the box. You just got to go that's... outside the box, baby, yeah. and, and, and get them. Yeah. Well, and then there are, you know, people that I would really love to interview, mm -hmm. but I, you, you just can't track these people down. I, uh, it, it's like, it, it, it's tougher to get a hold of them than it is Biden. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I think you're on the spot here. Like who's one of those people? Uh, a lot of major rappers. Okay. Like well, the newer guys, you know, like, like I'll, I'll get like, for instance, well, and, and back, back to Chris Ortiz again, but yeah. or Ortiz will send me a, um, He'll send me a, a deal, and he'll say, "Well, uh, in in a month and a half, um, Hit Hit King is going to be at the uh, whatever, Bill, you yeah. know, the Cotillion of Wichita or whatever." And he'll yeah. be like, "Oh, Hit King's coming through," and I'll be like, "Okay, first of all, I don't know who Hit King is." <laughs> so I go to try to research this guy. He's got a Facebook page, but has no contact information. Yeah, he's got a right. Twitter account. He hasn't touched in six months. He's got, you know, he doesn't have, you know, you, you, you try to find his, you know, PR people of his web, nothing. You can't find anything on this guy. And I'm like, I don't know what to say, dude. I can't track him down. You just can't. Yeah, it, it can be tough. Uh, I would say the first thing you figure out is, is there a contact on the Facebook or the website or something like that? There's not? Yes. Okay. Well, what label are they on? Do we have a label contact? Yeah. Okay. Well, if that doesn't work out, then you figure out what venue are they playing? Who's the in-house person for the promoter or the venue? If that doesn't work, you go, well, what is their spirit or beer on the market? Because just about every prominent rapper has a spirit on the market. It, Snoop Dogg has a gin, a rosé. Um, <laughs> there's a third one. Yes. I, I know that from covering a lot of food and beverage kind of stuff. And so sometimes you got to think, well, okay, there's no spirit one. What's their clothing line? There's no clothing line. What's their <laughs> it, Okay, what's the sports team they have a minority interest in? <laughs> wow, one, you're great. Thing. You remember how the Miami Dolphins, like 10, 15 years ago, wound up giving part of the team to like Fergie and Mark Anthony and J Lo? <laughs> Please yes. like me stakes in the sports team. Yes. Like Vince Neal had an arena football team. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you, you just kind of go down that list and then you figure out okay, we didn't get any of those. Can we figure out who the person's personal assistant is? Okay, no, that didn't work. Who's the person's accountant? Because you know, there seem to be the same 15 accountants for all. Same rappers. 15 accountants. That's awesome. And then if that doesn't work, do they have a production company that's producing their stuff? Like if you want 50 cent and you couldn't get them through the label or G unit, you think, well, is what's his vodka? Effen? E-F-F-E-N? I believe I so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can't get them through Effen. Well, the show Power that's on Stars that he produces, who can you get there? So it's, it's <laughs> you're it's awesome. Never give up thing. That, uh, That's great. I don't know. Like Sammy Hagar, I think I've gone through six publicists and gotten to know at this point, but I think I might get him on the seventh. You know, I I did a deal, uh, and this this is, I always tell this story to to various people that I talk to because it's just so strange. But Eddie Money uh, oh, in two thousand yeah. and. I don't know, eight, ten, <laughs> was uh, probably ten because that that was that was the year that that we were having all of our fun with Access TV. Um, I uh, I noticed I was sitting outside a uh, a recording studio in in and of all places, Junction City, Kansas, <laughs> and uh, they had this giant billboard up for Eddie Money, and I'm like, I like Eddie Money, <laughs> so. I like 
I knew it was not going to happen going through the sundown salute people because they're 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 gonna they're gonna be one of these promoters, and I'm sure you've run into these people who are like, well, just because I'm giving them fifty thousand dollars, I don't know if I can make them do an interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> so the celebrity boxing guy did that to me recently. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm just like, because I've learned over the years, like when I was working at 92.7 The Zoo in Salina, that we, we, there was this uh, unknown band at the time called In This Moment that was coming through. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and they, their lead singer, the little perv magnet, had been in a tattoo magazine. She had like a spread in a tattoo magazine. And our boss... Uh, bought like 15 copies of this. I wanted to get them signed, and we were going to give them away, and he was going to give them away on the air and all this bullshit. So yeah. he goes down to the place where they were doing the soft graph signing, and they'd set our program director down there. And at the uh, during one of the breaks, you know, we were supposed to do this big call in, and he was like, "Ah, I'm live," you know, all this bullshit. He, 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 brother Ken was essentially the, the living embodiment of Dr. Johnny Fever from WKRP. But, uh, (laughs) (laughs) and, uh, and, and so I was like, Hey, what's that chick look like? And he's like, what chick? And I'm like, uh, lead singer of the band. (laughs) And, uh, he's like, there's no chick here. So I was like, Oh, you got to put Kevin on the phone. Kevin was the promoter. Mm-hmm. And I said, so what happened to the chick? And he's like, oh, well, her manager said that she's she's uh, not feeling well and she's just going to come up to come to the show and she's not coming to the autograph signing. And I said, well, uh, boys, we've got an issue. Uh, our boss is uh, headed that direction <laughs> with a whole bunch of magazines is going to get signed. And, uh, I said, all you got to do is tell tell this guy, you know, get her out of the hotel room. And he's like, well, I don't know if I can do that. And I'm like, dude. And so he finally did. Well, he he told him, you know, well, if you don't get her over there, I guess, you know, we're not going to pay you, you know. And all of a sudden she was in a rental car and she was headed to the building. I just don't understand these people who have this attitude where it's like, well, I, what can I do? I'm just the one that's paying them for the performance later. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's an interesting ecosystem <laughs> where, where the artists sometimes look down on the interviewer, not realizing that the interviewer is giving them free publicity that they're using to promote themselves and their legacy yes. long term. Yes, and you know, yes, what does the interviewer get out of it? Maybe they can sell the content or monetize it. Maybe they're building credibility based off the coolness of other people, but it really is a two-way street. Yes. And sometimes management gets it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you get publicists where every time you reach out to them, they do the David Spade style, the, and you are. And we well, know. yeah, that, that, or they just go, oh, they're not available. Well, if they're not available, why'd you send me this press release? <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I, my, my wife hears this rant all the time, but. I'm A list to some people. I'm B C list to some. I'm F list to others. I'm I'm napalm, you know, avoid at all costs to other people. (laughs) Never know why it is. Nobody's really forthcoming to go, hey, we didn't like that you didn't hyperlink this one thing in the article. And for that, we will never talk to you again. Or, hey, we got the UVM and your site went down. So therefore we don't care about you. Yes. <laughs> you, you never know what it is. You just why you never get know. Opportunities or you don't. Sometimes you're the last minute cancellation. Uh, sometimes it's because you did a favor and they owe you one. Like I once got Jimmy Garoppolo, the quarterback on the 49ers, because I was willing to talk to a guy about recovering from liver cancer, about his D and D, graphic novel (laughs) that was a trade you know i uh we uh we we do a lot of stuff where we go out to the uh and and this gets me in trouble a lot with people but i don't really care uh we go out to the uh adult video news awards the the quote-unquote porn awards in vegas every year and i go out and cover the event interview people you know last year we had a uh 
or not last year, but the the, the, the year uh, a month before a worldwide pandemic happened. Um, we took a uh, we had a uh, local macho man Randy Savage impersonator go with us. <laughs> and, uh, so there's a Savage impersonator. There is a macho man Randy Savage impersonator wow. in Las I, Vegas. I, I, Hire him for our wedding. We were, he, we, my wife and I were looking into impersonators for our, our wedding that was in Vegas. He and I is, know that was an option. He is amazing. I found him based upon, <laughs> I found him. Uh, I, he apparently uh, at one time was in OBW. And then really? he realized he just couldn't do this, you know, wrestling thing because he was just too beat up. But he could do the savage thing. And he tried out for, they, they did like a cosplay contest at the first AEW show in Vegas. And this guy won it. And, they, and one of the things was he had ringside seats. And so he sat at ringside in full gear. And he said wow. there was guys popping out, you know, uh, that, that they ducked their head out, out, out the ropes and, and fist bump him and high five him. And was, he'd go backstage and they introduced him to Lanny as Lanny was there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Lanny was just like amazed. He's like, you do it better than anybody I've ever seen. And so I got a hold of this guy and he was like, well, could you get me a press pass? And I said, well, I don't know. I could see what I can do because everybody always wants press passes to the porn awards. So, <laughs> so yeah. I knew he was coming on Saturday, but on Friday um, was the deadline to get the passes. So I had tried all, all I could and I just couldn't get anybody to do it. But I had, but I had told enough people because I knew, much like everybody else, everybody, whether you're in the porn business or whether you're in the whatever, we're all pro wrestling marks. <laughs> we're all pro wrestling marks. So all the, and I said, he's going to be here Saturday in the press room. Well, that press room was sold out. <laughs> we're going up that elevator and he's in full gear. I'll have to send you a couple of the photos and some, interview, too, some of the interviews yeah. he did. He's in full gear. And he's like, and he and he just slips into the voice because he has been doing the voice for so long. He's like, you think anybody's going to recognize me? And we're like, you look like fucking Macho Man or any Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know um, the comedian Dan Soder. Dan Soder is amazing. His impression's amazing, <laughs> but he doesn't try and look like him at all. So this guy sounds like This him. guy's got this. He's got, he's went out and got outfits made. He's got, he's got <laughs> the Slim Jim outfit. He's got all the various outfits. He's got an NWO macho man outfit. He's, he's great. So he shows up. He goes into that. He goes into that press room. We come around that corner at the Hard Rock. <laughs> and that place goes wild. People are quoting the promos to him. They're wanting to get photos. People are like, holy crap. And so at one point, I bump into uh, Derek Pierce. And I said, hey, I said, I got to get this guy a press pass. And he's like, I'll just go talk to my PR person. And I said, uh, today's the cutoff. And he's like, I got this handled. So he goes over and he gets him a press pass. And then... I go over and I he's like it's all taken care of. So I go over and uh Julie or whatever her name is is over there and she's like, I just need him to come over here and tell me what he wants on the pass. It's all taken care of. <laughs> we take him down on that floor. Oh my god, he's getting mobbed. <laughs> I can imagine. He is great. We went past a couple different booths, and these ladies threw their, threw the, they basically threw the marks to the side because they wanted to beat Macho Man. <laughs> it was great. He was, he was something else. But that's the thing is that everybody is a fan, and and this is the thing that I found talking to various people over the years is that. Like, for instance, oh, Jesus, who is this? Somebody I don't want to talk to. I want to talk to you, it's not Lanny. them. Yeah, it's, it's Lanny calling me up saying, you're telling that story on the air again. But, um, so, I, uh, I, I would, I'm never going to be able to interview Alice Cooper, but I'm sure that Alice Cooper is a fan of somebody. And if you uh, get the guy talking, he's going to tell you about, oh, yeah, I'm a big fan of blah, blah, blah. Because everybody's a fan of everybody. 
It's just see, how this Alice works. Alice Cooper is, is what I was telling you about before. When I was saying, well, what what's the, the liquor or the spirit of the rapper and what's this and this? Yeah. Until three years or so ago, Alice Cooper had that restaurant in Phoenix called, I think, Cooperstown or Coop Town or something. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, it was it was right outside where the Diamondbacks, uh, Diamondbacks play. But if, if it's about a charity he believes in, golf, faith – sobriety or detroit or the hollywood vampires i think you can get them if you See? go to the right channels there yeah, you go so i think sometimes you need to apply that philosophy not just towards interviews but goals in general and you can eventually get him he he's out there he does interviews with small things as long as he believes in them so have you ever um because i've had a i've had a few people in in the media world that i know that just they 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 don't want to do the hard work <laughs> like like for instance like i was telling you the yeti money story or we're getting ready to tell you the yeti money story i i seen him i seen it on a billboard i start hitting up the pr people i start hitting up the record label i'm hitting up everybody i can possibly get my hands on and I'm getting no response. And then the day before the interview, I get this call from an unknown number. And I have never gotten cell phone, up until this point, never gotten cell phone calls from unknown numbers. Sure. And it was some random guy on the other end. And he was like, you still want to interview Eddie Money? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, be at the corner tomorrow at Sundown Salute. We're going to pull up. A guy's going to get off the bus. He's going to point at you, and you're going to get on the bus and do the interview. We're like, we'll be there at 11. Yeah. And yeah. we showed up, and that's how it worked. And it was his son. It was his tour manager. And we did the interview, and it was fine. Yeah. The competing radio station tried to get us arrested a little bit later, but the thing oh, is, <laughs> still got the we still got the interview. Yeah. So... I did some legwork, and I know that you've done some legwork on things. But sure. there are people that I know that they they uh, subscribe to, like, I am uh, the, the Internet Movie Database uh, subscription yeah. service because it supposedly gives you everybody's information. Have you ever used that and actually gotten anything, or is that just for the marks <laughs> so they can make some money? <laughs> uh, in the past i've used similar databases like that a few times but primarily what i get is press releases that i respond to pitches that i directly get and people that i know yeah it, it's really a mix of those three things paired with the occasional weird circumstance kind of thing like one time in, in my town long beach uh long island new york there was this film festival and they were kind of like, well, if you could be at, in front of the public library at this time, you could talk to Nancy Car Cartwright, a.k.a. Bart Simpson's voice. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> okay. <awesome>. okay. <laughs> so every now and then weird things happen of, can you be here in 20 minutes? Yes. Uh, but that's, you know, less than 5%. I got, uh, I got Tony Orlando. Oh, <laughs> years and years ago because I found out he was speaking at the Eisenhower Center and apparently he's on the board of the Eisenhower Foundation. <laughs> and I was like, what? Who knew Tony Orlando was a big Eisenhower mark? So we went and did the interview with him. He was fine. And then at the end, I had him sign. An, uh, this is the story me and my mom loved telling all the time. He sure. signs this. I didn't have anything for him to, uh, any, any pins or anything for him to sign the poster. Cause I always get something signed by everybody and I always get a photo with him. And so he goes to sign my poster. Well, she pulls this new pin out that she had bought somewhere, like some office max or whatever. And he signs the deal and he was like, this is a really good pin. And then he sticks it in his pocket and he wanders away. And she's like, you just can't walk up to Tony Orlando and go, you stole my fucking pen. <laughs> so... <laughs> Tony Orlando stole her pen. But it, it's just, it, it's little things like that. I'm sure you've run into all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, it happened. I started doing this when I was in high school. And the first five years of interviews are just not good at all. And I've been on oh, yeah. my yeah. channel. But some of the names I got were pretty amazing. But the interviews are not great. And I, I think it's like anything. You get better over time. 
weird stories happen when you're not expecting them to. Uh, certain things just happen over and over and over again, and then certain things are just all the time surprising and shocking. So, so you have yes. both of those things coexisting at the same time. Yes. You, you mentioned the thing about you had to go through someone to get somebody, and then you got this thing, and then you got the interview. Uh, that's, the that's how we ended up getting uh, at one time. I don't, she's not in porn anymore, but Annabelle Peaks. She's like a, at one time was a pretty big deal in in porn, and she posted. I'd, I'd been trying to track her down like crazy, and okay. couldn't get anybody to get a hold of her. And she posts some something on on Twitter about how I can't get anybody to make T-shirts for me. I can't get anybody to make T-shirts for me. Nobody will take my money. And I was like, I know a guy who was in a band who he designs T-shirts when they're not touring. So I got them hooked up. She got shirts. And she was like, well, how do I how do I repay you? And I'm like, hang out with me and my crew the first night of the AVNs in Vegas. So we go to a sushi restaurant and hang out. And we end up getting an interview and all this stuff. But I just, I seen some dumb little thing. And we did it. And it worked. And we got it. So so, so you used her to get over. Essentially. Essentially. <laughs> you know, I've, I've run in. At, one of the things we did one time was I, I ran in. Have you ever run into people at some of these things that you thought you would never, ever see in your life? And you're like, oh, my God, yeah. that's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it happens. Uh, again, it's, it's really a mix of planning and over planning and then occasional surprises of things that you never thought would happen that kind of did. I think that's really my, my story with everything. One of the things that I always like about doing all this stuff is the, and I'm sure you've, you've probably noticed this along the way, just doing the way you've, you've done things and evolved is the, uh, the way the interviews, you know, a lot of my interviews, cause like I said, Jiggy Jag TV was just some, some fuck thing we were doing, you know, we, we, we did a deal one time where, where. They didn't have, I didn't have my guest show up when he had a green screen. And so I'm like, well, I'll just stand in front of the green screen. You guys throw me things to wear and we'll just teach the kids in the production room, you know, how to use a green screen. Okay. And it was one of the greatest shows we've ever done because I just acted like an idiot and, <laughs> and we filmed it. But some of the interviews that we used to do, you know, I always had, I got a Christmas gift one time, the book of stupid questions. And so I would ask those questions. I would just ask these bands these stupid questions. Like, uh, what would, or, or the book of Would You Rathers. Would you rather fight like Mike Tyson or talk like him? And then they would, they would talk for 30 minutes on this, and they just thought it was yeah. the greatest thing in the world. Or yeah. we've, and, but then over the years, you're like, well, this is a big one. This is a name guy. This is a name girl. I, I got to prep. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> I, I know what you mean there. I, I used to, the first few years, I scripted all my questions in order. And then eventually I just realized, eh, have a couple of bullet points, have the name of the album or the movie written down. Yes. And then any, you know, questions or things you're actually curious about or friends of friends give you, hey, ask them about this. That pretty much can get me through any interview, whether it's a five minute slot or a 45 minute slot. It's, have it's have no you ever a concern of how to fill time? Have, have, have you ever got, and, and I, I get this every once in a while from PR people and I understand uh -huh. they're trying to watch out for their people. So it's that keyword word trying. Yes. <laughs> They'll do the whole, well, I need a, I need a list of suggested questions. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I usually just reply with, it's a conversation, not an interrogation. <laughs> and, and then a lot of times I'll get people that'll be like, well, I need a list of questions. And so one time I did an interview with somebody. It was some local band. And one of the things that they did was they talked about how they had gotten uh, a record deal because they were at an open mic and like... I don't remember who it was, but we'll, we'll just say Brett Michaels. Brett Michaels walked in and saw us at this open mic, and he loved us, and he gave us the connect to some guy, and we got a record deal. Okay, 
that wasn't on the list of suggested questions. So my next question is, okay, I'm going to get killed by people if I don't go, so what was it like hanging out with Brett Michaels? Well, guess what? I can't ask that. It's not on the list of suggested questions. Right. So I... <laughs> Yeah, I, I got as recently as a week and a half ago, I got a, so you'll send us all the questions in advance. And I basically pushed back. I said, tell me what it is that you want worked in or asked about. And I'll do that in the course of asking other stuff. We'll, we'll ask what you want up front and then we'll take it from there. And usually if they know, oh, you're going to ask about the important stuff that we care about at the beginning, have at it. Yes, Usually that's the important thing. Get it up, get it out of the way, and then and then you're a free person. Do do like uh, Stern used to do when he when he had the e cable show. He would have you know whoever on, and he would always ask them about their book, and then they would talk about their book. And then his next question is, okay, so how 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 many times have you done this with whoever? And, and it was he got what he needed to get in. <laughs> yeah, and then... it depends on the person. There's a good number of people that you'll interview. Ted Nugent is one of them. Where "Hi, how are you?" will lead to a seven-minute answer, and you realize, yes. okay, so if I have a twenty-minute slot, that means three questions. That happened with. Uh, we did a deal with. Um, God, who was it? Uh, Bog Hat, maybe I don't know. Okay. Roger but... Earl. Hat, maybe we, we 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 did something and i was told seven minutes and that was it yeah and 30 minutes later they're <laughs> they're still talking and the tour manager's coming into the coming into the dressing room looking at us like well, aren't you gonna cut them off and i'm like oh yeah i'm not cutting them off when they're done talking we'll be done talking <laughs> I'm I, I'm not gonna jump in and go. Well, we gotta go. No, that's that's like not one out shit. of every twenty five interviews for me. Yeah, the 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 craziest one I ever had with those was a comedian named Dick Gregory. He died, I think, three four years ago. Yes, he was still yes. doing comedy into his eighties. There's a new documentary about him, and it was supposed to be a twenty minute call, and I think we were on two hours twenty because he was speaking thirty minutes at a clip. And at one point, I just stopped going, yeah, and, uh-huh, right. And 30 minutes in, he goes, you still there? <laughs> yeah. And then he just kept going. And I think I only really used about two and a half minutes of of text from the whole conversation. And they weren't unhappy about it. They are like, cool, thanks for the article. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome. I, I think with when it, it's an artist like that, there's certain people I've spoken with where the publicist goes like, he's he's a talker. You'll you'll like him. <laughs> he's so, a talker. You'll like him. Yeah. That's great. Frozen so content. is is there anybody that you haven't been able to get that you just are busting your balls trying to get your trying to get your hands on or is it pretty much due to the fact that you've gotten a little bit of everybody you pretty much can just go well this PR person you know this is the same PR person for this person I've already interviewed if I send them that they're gonna right uh, there's there's so if you said to me Darren today's two interviews were your last interviews ever I'd go oh okay it's it's been a good ride. Uh, <laughs> it's been a good run. I'll think about it. I'll go, oh, you know what? I've, I've never spoken to this person or that person or that person. Hey, I'd like to speak to that person the second time and the third time because it was such a pleasure the first time. There's always people. I mean, some of the names that came up, Sammy Hagar, I'd like to speak with. Oh, because... I'd love to speak to Sammy. I think that would be fun. And <laughs> whole... it was supposed to happen a few rock. times, and then it didn't. And then Alice Cooper, like you, he's on my list. Yeah. Um, Hulk Hogan, who I said before, Dude. I want to talk to the <laughs> Hulkster because I want to clear up some of the, the half-truths that are out there and see what his takes are on, on the things. But I want to <laughs> talk to him about being a bass player in a cover band before he made it in wrestling. That's so right. What What's his preferred bass? Which songs was he playing back then? Does oh, he still that's, that's great, yeah. I want to hear about that kind of stuff because he was just a guy in a cover band 
that was big, supposedly, and they're like, you could be a wrestler. Yes. Well, and that's that's kind of my uh, deal with, like, Bischoff. Yeah. Um, I've... I've interviewed his wife on several occasions. I've interviewed. Yes, I've, good. I've interviewed yeah. Connie, old, old, old Conrad Thompson, the yes. gatekeeper, yes. <laughs> the pod father, as they like to say. Yes. But with with Bischoff, I don't want to hear about any of the freaking wrestling crap. I, 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 if I can hear, I can, I can go on anybody's show or his own show and hear that all day long. I want to hear about the stuff of him pitching shows in Hollywood and working on yeah. reality shows. That's the kind of stuff I want to hear about because he never talks about that with anybody. I want to hear about him and Jason Hervey taking me yes. and doing shows. Yes. Yes. That's what I want to hear. I don't care about, you know, oh, well, you called out Vince McMahon all night. Oh, I, I, dude. We've yeah. Heard, we've that, heard about so that. I, that's one of my things <laughs> about doing like, Today I spoke to the rapper Young MC, and I, I, I'm <laughs> a big MC. fan of Young MC. Uh, he's great. And the first few questions, you could tell he's like, oh, "Bust a move" came out, and blah 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 blah. And then I asked him about something that he said, "You know, no one's ever asked me about that before." And that was he was on this album by this pop punk band called Mest in the early 2000s. <laughs> of course he was. And I asked him about it, and he goes, "You know, well." I was a big fan of the producer John Feldman from Goldfinger. I'm a huge Goldfinger fan. You go, what? <laughs> Goldfinger. And then you peel back the layers, and I said something about Faith No More. And then he was talking about playing on stage with Faith No More in the early 90s. <laughs> and we got Mike That's Gordon awesome. from Faith No More to play on his second album. <laughs> and I want to dig into that. Stuff. Like, how did Flea wind up playing on Bust a Move? <laughs> and That's great yeah. shit. Yeah. So I, I think that with a lot of these people, they get tired of talking about the same yes. thing. This, yes. This was a wrestling thing that blew my mind. Uh, you know Grand Funk Railroad? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mark Farner's wife. You follow me so far? Mark yes. Farner's, yes. Her uncle was the Sheik. Not the Iron <laughs> Sheik. Not the Iron Sheik, obviously. Sabu's the uncle. Sheik from Michigan. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Terry Brunk's uncle. <laughs> That guy, that's Mark Farner's wife's uncle. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you just ask this stuff and that comes out and that's more interesting than, uh, so you're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Is that a bummer? <laughs> yes. Yes. Shit like that. You know, my, you know, I've got this uh, photographer friend of ours, or friend of mine that lives out it's in uh, he no Michael Nagy. Okay. This guy lives in New Jersey of all places. Okay. And uh, he just falls ass. He he's one of these guys that'll be walking down the street and falls ass backwards into a box of money and opportunity. And <laughs> he's met all sorts of people over the years. He uh, he gets a hold of me one day and he's like, "I'm going to a private mansion party with the band Ministry," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> Good Have deal. you ever run into people like this that they're not really trying, but they just do all these amazing things? Because like with you and I and other people, we're, we're busting our hump. Nagy's just walking down the street. And he's like, oh, I got invited to a private mansion party, and I think Trump's going to be there. <laughs> and as... <laughs> I, I occasionally have something like that happen for me. So occasionally there's a right place, right time moment, or somebody turns out to be a friend of a friend, and that happens. I find that the harder you work, the more likely that kind of stuff happens. Yes. But other people are, they're, um, to use the baseball term, they're born on third base. <laughs> yes, indeed. But but a lot of the people who are born on third base, the second the things get harder, if they, they have to put the effort in, they're, they're done. They quit or they delegate, and it's not a long-term thing. So what I mean by that is let's say you wind up writing for Rolling Stone. The second that you get fired from Rolling Stone, you know, good luck getting those calls returned. Yes. Yes. Well, this has been fun. I really have enjoyed talking to you. We definitely have to do this again because you 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 are just amazing. Oh. And uh 
I would definitely love to have you on uh, some of some of our do, do some of our uh, our Sunday shows where we have on the the rock people and the porn stars and all the shenanigans. <laughs> I, I I would love to have you co-host. Oh, what, that's kind of you. Thank what, you. One of our shows some weekend because uh, I, I I think we could have a heck of a lot of fun. Well, the bottom line is thank you for having me. Keep up the great work you're doing. You're no uh, slouch yourself when it comes to getting the interviews and, more importantly, getting the work done and getting the content out there. Because, yes. as you said, the, the interview itself is just 10%-ish or so yes. of the work. It's the it, it's the going and uploading the content to all the various places. It's Metrics. the tweeting and the Instagramming and, and all the shenanigans and... <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You feel the pain for better and for worse. And you know, <laughs> it's going to be the same deal, you know? That's awesome. Well, you have been fun. This has definitely been fun, and I look forward to having you back. Before we let you go, my friend, how do people get in touch with you online, uh, consume your content, and everything else? Thank you yet again, uh, James. Such a pleasure. It's at Paltrowitz. It's like Gwyneth Paltrow with the ITZ at the end. And <laughs> I don't find it on Twitter, Instagram, I think it's Darren Paltrowitz on on Facebook. YouTube, I think it's Paltrowitz. Whatever it is, just put the damn name in Google. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, uh, I will be in touch, my friend, because I, I definitely, as, as as Alex Jones likes to say, we got to have you ride shotgun some Sunday on the uh, Sunday show. Oh. <laughs> See, that, that would be... That would be um, Alex Jones, Glenn Beck, and Man Cow would be the three that I would uh, like to try to get my hands on. I've I originally said Huey Lewis, Hall and Oates, and Eddie Money. I got I got Oates. Yeah. I haven't gotten Hall, and I got Eddie. And I've heard from Huey Lewis's PR people, really nice Southern woman, but she told me one time she's like Huey's kind of an asshole. So. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. I, that, don't, 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 <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I think she was just I think she was just having a bad day the day I called her. We all have them. <laughs> but this was not a bad day or a bad night. So thank no, you. No, this James. this was yeah. excellent. Well, I appreciate <laughs> it. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Darren. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Appreciate morning. it, brother. There he goes. And uh, thanks for paying attention to us. And we will see you next time.